Right, so this bike behind me is the new Specialized Turbo Levo SL. It is. It's the uh, Com Expert, Com Carbon Expert, I think it's called. Uh, it's got a GX drivetrain, AXS GX drivetrain, so that's a wireless system. But what's really important is uh, the geometry of this bike, which is very different from the old one, and also that motor down there. Yeah, so I'm very interested in how that motor performs compared to the old one, because this motor will be used in many of other specialized bikes as well uh, later on. And also I'm interested in the suspension and the geometry of this bike. So this is now more a full enduro bike and not a trail bike anymore. Yeah, so let's give it a go. Yeah, so I just came from an e-bike with, with an EP801 motor. Yeah, so I want to see if this motor is significantly less powerful than the EP801 motor. And if it is more powerful than the old SL1.1 motor, maybe more importantly than the TQ, TQ50 motor, I think it was called, something else probably. So that will be very interesting. But right off the bat, I feel very comfortable on this bike. The motor, yeah, let's see when I climb up here, this little steep section. So far so good though. So I just rode this little steep hill only 15 minutes or so ago. And now it's time for the SL motor to make its appearance. So there is a difference definitely, but I don't feel that this is underpowered in the same way as the old SL1.1 motor was. And I would say it's on par with the TQ motor, I guess. It's not a huge difference. Maybe there's a little power advantage for this motor. One thing though, this is a lot quieter than the old SL1.1 motor. It's less whining. Now this is a new bike, so Maybe that's the reason why it's so quiet. Yeah, so far so good, I guess. The exterior of the motor, manufactured for Specialized by German Male, is still the same. This is an imported motor for Specialized and it's being used in many other types of bikes in the Specialized lineup, not only in mountain bikes. It's also still a 48 volt motor system, but the internal hardware is new. Overall, it's a much better motor than the old SL1.1. There is more power available and it's very quiet in comparison. Not as quiet as the TQ motor though, but not very far from it. It's easy to compare both the SL1.2 with the HPR50 and the new Turbolevo SL with Trek Stealthy Fuel EXE. The bike types are very similar, where versatility seems to be the guiding star. Both bikes are lightweight, have adjustable geometry and an eye-watering price. Nice bikes, but pricey. had 30 minutes with this bike, so I can't really tell how it rides. I just wanted to get a feel for it and test out that new motor. But I have ridden the Trek Fuel EXE a couple of times, and it's about the same feeling to ride this bike. With versatility, I really mean adjustability, where you can change the geometry to fit either your local trails or a bike park. This is something I like and makes the bike more fun in flatter terrain too. With these low-powered motors, there are some trade-offs from full-powered motors. With the factory settings, there is very little assistance when starting to pedal. The HPR50 motor is the worst, with absolutely zero assistance from the get-go. I hate that, and that makes technical climbs harder. I mean, the power is not there when you need it the most. It's a little bit better with the SL1.2. But with both motors, the real power is high up in the cadence range, whereas full-powered motors will give you a whole lot more grunt almost regardless of cadence. 
The old SL1.1 motor has been a hit so far in terms of reliability and hopefully the SL1.2 will follow that trend. The HP R50 has had a few teething problems unfortunately and reliability is my number one priority regardless of how quiet and refined the motor is. Alright, that was just a quick feel. It's a nice bike and the motor is stronger and quieter than before. But I cannot really say anything about the ride of this new Turbo Libo SL. Perhaps I will get the chance to test it a bit more thoroughly at some point. Or not. <laughs>